Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the fifth of 15 videos in the mobile weather app series. A link to the app website is in the description below, as well as links to the other 14 videos in the series. In this video, we'll be testing out our API service class. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notifications when new videos in this series and others are released. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you feel inclined to support my work, you can always buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below. No pressure though. Now that we have our singleton set up, it's time to use it to fetch data from the API. Back in the second video, we got our API key and we have a sample URL that we can use now and the function to fetch the forecast. So back in our playground, let's create a constant called API service that is a shared instance of our API service. Now we can use this to call our getJSON function. For the URL string, let's use our fixed call we formed in the second video. Luckily, I saved it to my text file so I can copy it from here. Now, if we tap enter on the completion handler, we see that we need to create an argument that is a result type. And because we are using generics, we'll need to specify the type that we expect for the decodable success, which is a forecast. And the error type is our API service dot API error. Now we can switch on the result with our success and failure types, and each has an associated value. For success, it'll be our forecast, so we'll call it forecast. And for the error, it will be our API error. So let's call it API error here. Let's work on the failure case first. We can switch on API error. Now, there is only one case, and that is dot error with an associated string value. So we'll call it error string. And for now, we'll just print it out. It is a success case where I want to take a look at my forecast now. Looking back at my forecast struct, I see that there is one property only, and that is the daily, which is an array of dailies, so we can loop through our result.daily. So let's do that. For day in forecast.daily, let's print day.date. Let me run this now. Wait a minute, that's way too far in the future. And that's because when we created our function, we chose a default date decoding strategy of deferred to date. And obviously that's not correct. If we look at our JSON, we see that it looks like some big integer. This is in fact the number of seconds since 1970. So we'll need to use that date decoding strategy. So back in our function, let's add in the date decoding strategy argument as seconds since 1970. When we run again, we get the correct days. Now I prefer to have this printed with a different date format, however. So I'm going to create a date formatter before our function. And I'm going to use E comma MMM comma D as the format. This will print the day of the week, followed by an abbreviation of the month, and then the day. And now when we print out our date, we can use the dateFormatter.StringFromDate method. Okay, what do we want to know about each of these days? Well, I'd like to know the minimum and maximum temperatures, the humidity, description, and percentage of cloud and the probability of precipitation. Well, max and min are part of the temp property, so we'll need to use max and min to get it. In order to indent a bit, I'm going to print it like this with some spaces in front. And I can use a comma just to separate and have two different things on the same print line. Whoa, that's hot. Remember, this is Kelvin. So we'll need to do something and convert this data, but we'll do that when we build the app. 
Let's add humidity now. If we check our struct, we see that it is just a property on the daily struct, so we can just say day.humidity. For description, it's part of the weather array, and we'll want the first element of that array, and then we can access the description. For clouds and probability of precipitation, these are just properties of the daily struct. Let's run this now. Now, once we're in our real app, we can use a number formatter to present the cloud and precipitation values a little better than this. One last thing though, I want to make sure that I'm getting a good URL for our weather icon so that I can present it in my UI. So let's add one more property. We see that it too is a property of the weather array, so we'll want that first element again, and then we can use our computed property that we developed in the last video. When we print this out, we see that it's printing out the URL. Let's copy one of them. How about this one for light snow on the Sunday the 24th? I can now paste this into the browser. And yes, indeed, I'm getting a snowflake image that I can use in my app. Now one more thing to end this playground section. This is always getting the forecast for one location, and I want to be able to get it by city name. So for this, we can use core location. So I'll need to import core location. With that in place, we now have access to all of the core location methods, and one of which will allow us to find the coordinates from an address, and that address can be a city name. That method is the string method. Just before our API service and after the date formatter, start with an instance of clgeodecoder class and then call that method. It has two arguments, the string we want to decode to our coordinates and a closure that we can use once it has completed the task. Let's enter Vancouver as the string and hit enter on the completion handler. It has two arguments, one will be an array of CL placemark, and the other an error, both optional. Let's call them placemarks and error. If an error exists, meaning we've got that optional value, let's print out the error's localized description. Now, placeholders is actually an array, so we'll take the first one and select the location coordinates for the latitude and longitude. And we only want to proceed if these values are not optional, so we can do an if let on both. Then we can cut and paste in our function within our if let body. Then we can replace our hard-coded values for lat and long with string interpolation. Running this now, we get that same forecast. I can change the location now to, say, Paris, and run once more. Great, we have what we need now to build our app. So, on to part two. Before I go there, however, just want to mention that if you have problems with the date formatter, you can check out this video.